I'm throwing my 23 years of art experience out the window so I can start from scratch. I spent three years drawing almost nothing. I barely picked up a pencil. See, I had something called depression. I blame the pandemic. Once I finally saw the light at the end of the tunnel, my friends convinced me to start posting again, and I couldn't thank them enough. But I lost a lot of skills I developed over the years. I didn't know where to start, so I made this my start. I'm going to spend the next 100 days drawing every single day. We learned about form and perspective in the last two episodes, and in this episode, we'll be learning all about line. I will be live on Twitch while I draw on Fridays, Saturdays, and Mondays, so don't be afraid to join so we can draw together. Enough with the small talk. Let's get started. If you don't know, I love my line art. I like making crisp, clean lines to define shape. I didn't always do that until recently. My art used to look very painterly during college. Honestly, it's a good look, but I like the cartoony vibes my art has been serving recently, and it takes a lot less time. I've spent at least two to four hours a day drawing every single day on top of projects like making emotes and funny chat commands for Twitch. Anyway, this has been exhausting, but it has shown some amazing results. The amount of improvement is insane from just 20 days of drawing alone. You are welcome to do this challenge with me, but I just want to stress that you do do not have to do with this much every day. I am just a masochist who likes pain, I guess. Just a simple sketch every day will help you grow. Don't burn yourself out. I say this because I care about you. I really, really do. So take care of yourself. So according to drawpaintacademy.com, line has multiple forms, straight or curved, thick or thin, horizontal or vertical, and broken or continuous. One thing they don't mention is value, dark or light lines, and hard or soft edges on lines. That is a lot of line types, but there are more. There's perspective lines, gesture lines, hatching or cross hatching, contour lines, and imaginary lines that point to a focal point, which we will discuss more in our composition video. I was taught a lot of this in college. Obviously, I forgot about them because Jesus was a lot of information when I was researching for this video. Is it useful though? Yes. For day 21 of this challenge, I decided to catch up a little on anatomy. I know this is not the point of this video, but I felt there was a bit of a gap in my knowledge. I just did a quick anatomy study on kids versus adults anatomy. I think it's important to be able to draw characters of any age, so I decided to get that taken care of. I also did head angles because three quarter views of the head <laughs> daunts me a bit. So I did a quick exercise on head angles. We will go over anatomy more in a later video as well. Day 22 was fun because I explored how different brushes can affect your art style. My current theory is that your art style consists of a few things. Shape language, line art, brush choice, color, and shading. This might change in the future, but this is just my current theory. Depending on how you do these, it can change your art style drastically. Remember, your art style is always with you, though. You just have to keep drawing to unlock it or manually create it by looking at art you like. However, this exercise was super useful because it made me realize how much my own style changes from just the brush alone. Day 23 and 25 are being saved for last. I decided to fully render these pieces, and I cannot tell you enough that I didn't think I actually drew these. <laughs> It was a huge shift in skill level. So stick to the end so you can see how I made these pieces. Like, they're really, really good. I can't stress that enough. On day 26, I decided to draw a fancy fairy. I put a lot of care into my line art here, obviously, but I wanted to talk about some technique that might help your line art stay clean, straight, and controlled in hopes that you can throw chicken scratching and searching lines down the drain. So my first tip is don't use your wrist to draw. Not only can it give you carpal tunnel and arthritis down the road, it doesn't give you as much control either. So creating line art, I would say is like a dance. Instead of using your wrist, you would use your whole arm and shoulder. Practicing drawing with your whole arm on a scratch piece of paper and a pen could really help if you have trouble with chicken scratch. A lot of art babies have this issue and that alone can help. So that was my first tip and I love how day 26 went. She is so cute with her little pigtails and fairy wings. I feel like there's definitely some magical girl vibes here. <laughs> For day 27, I decided to draw another cell phone pose. I don't know, I feel like drawing characters holding a cell phone or taking a selfie resonates with a lot of people, including me. It almost feels like we're breaking the fourth wall when we're looking at drawings like this. While I'm drawing, I wanted to give another tip about line art, especially for digital artists. When you are working with a brush, don't be afraid to up the stabilization play around with different brushes and see which feels more comfortable for you. A lot of the times, probably the reason why you're having shaky line art or having trouble drawing a straight line, it's because of the brush. Not every artist works well with every brush. So I would explore it, 
I would go into the settings up the stabilization. You know, it, it can be very useful to do. Just that little change could help so much, especially for our, my digital artist babies. Anyway, I love how this piece turned out. This one, I definitely plan on finishing and making it into a TikTok. I don't know, she's just so freaking cute. I think it's, it's just the vibes. Day 28 was also a lot of fun. I implemented the knowledge I gained after creating the perspective portion of this challenge, like the video and then working on those exercises. It feels like a moment between you and your girlfriend on your first date. The butterflies are in full effect and she's inviting you to come sit and watch the sunset. It feels pretty intimate and romantic when I'm looking at her and it's just so freaking cute. I had a lot of trouble with the hand, so I did cheat a little bit and I'm not afraid to admit it. I took a picture of my hand and oh no, oh no, you saw my flesh. Anyway, so I traced it. Yeah, I, I know tracing is a big no-no sometimes and all that, but it's my own hand. I didn't have any more time, so I decided to take a shortcut. When tracing, I would not recommend doing it unless you already know how to do the thing without tracing. Like for example, I could draw the hand. It just might take me a little bit longer, but I can draw the hand. But yeah, I might be canceled for this, but tracing is okay in some circumstances, such as this one. I already know how to draw hands, but I also did not have time to finish it without tracing. So I mean, it, it would have had the same result either way. I just sent, wanted to save a little bit of time. Day 29 was heavily inspired by the manwas I've been reading. If you don't know, I've talked about this a little bit in stream, but I've developed a crippling addiction to reading isekai manwas with like female protagonists. I don't know, it's like a huge form of escapism for me, and I wanted to draw a bit of a comic style for this line art piece. I've noticed the way I've been drawing expressions is improving too, and I definitely blame it on my reading habit. It's given me a lot of inspiration. I also drew a male because I never draw men, I don't know why. As you can see during this speed paint, I balance out the thick and thin lines to separate the outline of each character from each other, just because the line art was kind of blending together in my opinion. Everyone uses thick versus thin line art differently, by the way. I personally use it to outline the basic shape so the small details aren't taking over the whole piece or emphasize the shadow. Some artists use thick lines in the foreground and thin lines in the background to help draw the eye to the focal point. There is a lot that goes into it, but it's different for every artist, so don't feel like you have to do it the way I do it. Feel free to experiment, have fun. Day 30 was nice and casual. I've been trying to draw this pose in my head for ages but I finally got it down from my practice and perspective and from my previous videos. I think it's super cozy and sweet seeing her mad at a text or something. I like that this piece makes the viewer ask questions. It seems to tell a story. If you didn't notice, the teddy bear <laughs> is also looking at the phone too. I had trouble with the anatomy on this piece. It was really hard to translate her lying down in the foreground with the way her arms hold herself up on the bed as well as holding the phone. It was definitely a challenge and I might change it up a bit before I finish it completely with color and rendering. All right, so this is the part we get out of order. That's because again, I want to save the best for last. So just stick with me. If you get lost, I do have bookmarks and timestamps and all of that throughout the video. So this is day 24. 23 will be saved for last. I decided to utilize the symmetry tool because I was running low on time that day. I wanted to draw a cute woman looking up. Maybe she saw something at a store that she fell in love with considering her style. Maybe a purse or a piece of jewelry. Or she could be looking at, at a tall, handsome boyfriend or a tall, beautiful girlfriend of hers admiring their beauty. As I start rendering this, I decided to use the multiply layer technique instead of rendering each color block. This isn't useful in all cases, but for this one, it, it's it seems to work and it seemed to work for the other two as well. Of course we have to do a video dedicated solely to rendering eventually, but the trick to this is to think about the shadow and light color before rendering to make the multiply layer work. Using the multiply layer instead of shading each color individually made this piece seem much more realistic. It was also faster like so much faster. Day 25, I felt like drawing an ethereal witch or maybe a magic user, maybe a protagonist in an isekai manga, you know, the ones I've been obsessed with. She's holding a ball of light. Maybe it's a power source of some kind or a magic item she has been looking for for a long, long time. She's transfixed by the beauty of the light while she is surrounded by darkness. I took the opportunity to utilize multiply layers again because I wanted to set the color of the shadow in the environment. Just, you know, set the mood. I loved carving out each piece of light from the magic orb thingy. <laughs> If I can't, I can't find a better word for it. It was very satisfying and therapeutic. It's exactly what I needed for that day because I was so like tired from life. I'm okay, but you know, a therapeutic art piece, I'm never gonna say no to that. I'm so glad it turned out better than I expected though. Okay, so here is the final piece. This is back to day 23. This is literally my favorite piece yet. 
better than the Pokemon fan art, in my opinion. I don't know, that's up to you. But remember, we saved the last few drawings for last because I rendered them completely. Yeah. So there's a reason for that. The reason being this one turned out so well. I decided to make a cute dragon creature for day 23 because I just, I don't know, I felt like drawing something other than a humanoid for once. If you didn't notice in the other drawings also, my sketches are looking a lot cleaner and less messy before. This is because I use the same tips I talked to you about throughout this video with my sketching and not just my line art, just my sketching as well. I started super light with a very thin brush and got darker over time. I love that I can now have cleaner sketches because it would look super nice on social media. <laughs> I've been scared drawing my whips on Instagram, my works in progress, and all that because my sketches used to look like I vomited scribbles on a page. It was like not readable at all, only I could read it. But if your sketches are clean, then your line art will be clean. I loved how this piece turned out. Did I mention that? I still can't believe I drew this. Everything went perfect for this piece. Like, it, it looks like a professional did it. I mean, am I a professional? I don't know. I just like drawing pretty pictures. <laughs> if you like to use line art, I hope you learned a thing or two from this part of the challenge. I get so much joy when I see that I've helped someone improve. Like, seriously, I do. So let me know in the comments what you'd like me to teach you next. Don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up with this challenge with me. We also have a Discord link below for advanced and beginner artists. We have been growing such a positive community there, so make sure you join so you can be part of that growing art community. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, evening, or night. You are doing absolutely amazing. See you next time.